is when people, for whatever reason, start outlining the lips. Nobody in here, I think, wore that kind of heavy makeup where they have the lip outlined. So what we want to look there is a few things that may be helpful for you guys and may be general, but everybody's picture is going to be a little bit different. For one, for most of you, your upper lip will probably be a little bit darker than your lower lip, just from the way the shadows fall on it. That's not true for everybody, but for many of you, your upper lip is going to be a little bit darker than your lower lip. Your upper lip is also probably going to be a little bit darker than your skin tone. All right, whatever the skin tone looks like in the photograph, it's going to probably have a little bit of value to it. So when we start, what I'm doing over here is I'm just trying to get a nice even layer of gray on the upper lip just to get started. There might be some light spots that require a little bit of white, but I need to sort of bring that out and off of the actual upper lip and the skin part. Hi. Yeah, I'll give it. Thank you. Next, we're going to take a look for the darkness. Now, in this case, the center is where you're going to find, in this particular picture, a little bit more darkness. Now, some of you might notice that one side of your mouth might be a little bit darker. And again, it matters on where you position and where the lights were, but for the most part, you're going to find some, either a dark side or a dark middle. And again, I'm working with the basic stuff first. I'm not worried about details and things like that. And really what I'm trying to keep going over here is an edge, a nice, I guess, sort of defined, implied edge, and not a dark, heavy black outline. For whatever reason, some people feel like they have to outline the lips, and that's usually where they ruin it. Now, there might be a little bit of texture in there. All right, just like we had in the eyebrows, there might be a little bit of a, a situation where you can see some of the little sort of folds and cracks in the lip. You don't need to get those in. They're not necessary. But the one thing I'll tell you about putting them in is if you do, they should be super light and less is more. Now, one of the things that is necessary for the, the mouth to really stand out, and almost every one of you have this, is you're going to have a dark corner. Okay. That dark little recessed corner over there that, for those of you who are smiling, sort of folds into the cheek a little bit. It, without this, you don't really have an edge to your mouth, and your mouth doesn't come out and look three-dimensional. So for those of you, sometimes it's the same thing with the nostrils and the same thing with the eyes. Everybody's afraid to make something too dark, and that's okay. But when we do see it in the picture, and it is one of the darkest spots on our face, we have to have to add it. Same thing on the other side. It's one of the darkest spots on this particular picture. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of charcoal. Now the lip itself, from the upper lip to the lower lip, yes, there are areas and parts of this that have a real clear delineation and almost an outline. But the worst thing I think people can do is just go straight across and make one real dark black thick line. Try to look and see where you see some variation. In this case, in the middle of the lip, we might see that it's a little bit thicker and a little bit darker. And as we work out towards the corners, it gets a little bit lighter and a little bit faint. We don't need to make this super duper dark for people to know that there's a difference between the top lip and the lower lip. Now, in many cases, the lower lip might be a little bit lighter than the upper lip. That's okay. In her case, you can see that most of the shading for the lower lip happens in the center of that lower lip and not necessarily on the outside edges. So I'm going to keep a lot of that on the outside edges pretty much white. That's, that's what you see in her particular picture, but yours might be a little bit different. Don't be afraid to do what you see. All right? If you, that's the way you see it in the picture, do it. If it's not, don't make stuff up. I'm going to start with my first pass, which is going to be on the lighter side. I'm going to blend that in and grab my kneaded eraser. Use your eraser at this point not to correct mistakes, but to help you draw. And in this case, I'm going to use it to kind of shape up that glossy part on this side that's pretty white. All right. And the only way this little white area is going to stand out is by making sure that I have some gray around it. The only way you're going to get a white highlight in any part of this picture is having gray on the picture. So one of the things that she has done fairly successful on her own is make that light gray. Now, some of you are a little afraid of the light gray. It's okay. You know, but we want to try to get it in there. Center of the mouth here, again, not only the shadow of the lip that's on the lip itself, 
but there is a big shadow for almost all of you that is right beneath the lip. And for whatever reason, that's another thing that people in the past generally don't want to make that dark for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know if you think it looks like it's going to be a beard or something, but that little bit of shadow underneath the lip makes the lower lip look full, makes it sort of pop out. And you can see just right underneath there's a little bit of gap of white in there. And then the shadow on the chin, this is a, a key part to adding to the mouth that's going to make yours sort of work. I've got sort of glossiness and brightness on this side. I'll take my eraser once again, pinch out a nice clean little tiny, tiny fingertip almost and kind of brighten that up a little bit, shape it up. And then again, the edge underneath this side of the mouth is really only created by that gray value underneath it meeting that white. We don't need an outline here. You can see a little bit of our pencil line, but I'm going to kind of minim minimize the look of an outline and see how you can create that sort of separation over there without outlining things. So I can't stress this enough. Don't outline your lips. Just go by what you're seeing in the picture. Don't worry about the little tiny details. You can try to put some in if you're at that level, and some of you are, but you don't need them for this to be an excellent drawing. With that, once we're done with the lips, you're obviously working on to the chin and the neck. All right, we're not ready for the hair yet. Maybe tomorrow, possibly Monday, I'll be going over how to do the hair. The hair is complicated it's going to be different for all of you um, but I think it's actually probably one of the more fun parts because you get to kind of make up some stuff a little bit and some of you have been dying to make up stuff so that should work so if you get done with this at this point you should continue on to your chin there's nothing particularly mystifying about doing the chin the only thing I'm going to tell you is is again when you're working on these things make sure that you're creating nice crisp edges do not just outline your jawline you can see a clear edge of her chin to her neck based on basically just having a nice clean edge to the jawline all right and that i did not with an outline but i did it with my eraser so keep that in mind when you're working for those of you who end up finishing like the chin and the cheeks and things like that the next thing that we can focus on as well is like the ears you have a lot of shading in the ears. Make sure that we can get in there and do that. And once again, I'll tell you, nobody should be working on the hair just yet. I could probably go in and make these particular lips a little bit darker, but I think that you can get the basis of what I was doing. And again, look to create your edges with what you see in the picture, the lights and the dark, and not just by outlining the dark.
schedule for next year, make sure you sign up for it. You're a 10th grader, right? Yeah. yeah. You, listen, you're outstanding. You're outstanding. All right, if you need that, I'll tell you all the time, but I don't think, I think it doesn't mean anything after a while. You're very, very good. If you like it, do more. If you don't like it, it's okay. We can still be friends, but if you're thinking like, I'm not good enough to do it, okay, you're good enough to do it. I give you my seal of approval. You're good enough to do it. All right? <laughs> You didn't take it in Memorial? I didn't go to Memorial. Oh, where'd you come from? I came from a private school. Oh, uh, uh, Muslim school? Yeah. Where? Here? It was Hillside. Where is it? Hillside. Oh, Hillside, okay. But uh, but you lived here. You all grew up here? Yeah. Well, I was in Shaw. Okay, alright. How'd you, you didn't like the religious school? Um, no, I just Say louder. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. 
So the whole school is just memorizing the Quran? Yes. Did you learn other stuff? Yeah, it was like that. Oh, okay, all right, all right.